I wanted to show like the whole process of the illustration, like how do we start, like from the idea, like how do I get the task, like what does it look like, and like all the steps in between. So as an example, we'll use actually one part of our book. So I said I will be using uh, like the, this hyperloglog uh, like chapter, and there's a part here that we were actually advised to like to make uh, to visualize it. It describes the like linear accounting like part. The whole chapter is about uh, estimating the number of unique elements in a large data set, and like while the main algorithm here is like hyperloglog, there is a mention of the linear accounting algorithm as well, which is used, let's say, for the smaller numbers. So here it says, like in the case of very small cardinalities in relation to the number of buckets, many buckets will, okay, main empty, blah, blah. Uh, we will resort to the probabilistic method called linear accounting to establish the true cardinality. So this approach follows the logic of ball and bin setup, where if we throw n balls into n bins, Uniformly, randomly, based on how many buckets remain empty, we can estimate the total number of balls. And the more details can be found, like in the paper of linear counting. So we got, let's say, one recommendation that we visualize it, that we make it also like a drawing of this paragraph. So in order to do it, actually, the first part would be okay. From here, I see like that I'm supposed to draw like the balls and bins like to use that association, like that metaphor, and we will use the original paper. So before drawing anything, I am actually reading like the papers that I over here mentioned. So here it's like Wang et al. And that one is here, like the paper. So as the first step, let's say learn, like what, what am I supposed to like draw? We are, I'm not just a, like, redrawing or so like a, over the finished diagrams, but we are trying also to make it as close as possible like to the real algorithm. So I'll just skip it like to the part where he actually explains like the basic algorithm of how it works. So here it says, okay, there are like two steps. One step is like he creates like the bitmap of the size M initializes the okay, created all to zeros. Then afterwards, like it, it is trying to fill like the bitmap and it, uh, and like which elements like uh, they appear, like the bitmap gets the number one. So the idea of the whole algorithm comes in the step two, where he actually counts the number of empty bins and uses the equation like written here like for, yeah, for estimation. And under there is actually like a picture of how it looks like. So there are like some, so here's a bit mask. There like, there are some entries that are causing like collision, like that have like the same hash. And there is also like a possibility that in this stream, like there are like two that actually, yeah, duplicates. We'll try to make a similar drawing will like use like just ball and bins like to do the same part. Now also let's say when we do these either diagrams or whatever graphs and such, you will see that everything is hand drawn so that it looks friendly. But let's say most of the time we actually use like we use let's say either software like either GeoGrip Gebra or like we use we program let's say a little bit like just that I have, okay, this is like a really simple, like just that I have, let's say some values that are generated by the computer. Okay, I don't think it's like it's visible like from me right now on the screen. So it is not like really set up. Here, I did like do everything as it says like here in the algorithm. The only difference is like the linear accounting, it works for a large, large sets of data for larger cardinalities and I'm not going to draw like 1000 balls. So I actually ran, let's say, this program several times until I got the results that I liked, that like I enjoyed. So over here, let's say, I actually got like how many balls I have to draw where. I started like making a sketch in Krita. 
So in Krita, like I actually I love the software so much because you are actually here able like to do also the animation part, but we'll do like just a drawing. So I go create a new image. And one of the things that is also like was a question is like the size of the image and what does this like uh, pixel per inch like uh, means. So for box, over here, like we, uh, you get, let's say, some, some specifications on like how big they are supposed to be. For the drawing, like on computer, the digital drawing, like is important, like just how many pixels are going to be there. So we usually like it's enough, like 2000 as such uh, that we use like in the book. This pixel per inch, let's say it's not so important because even if you do it wrong, like you can still rescale the image. So you need pixels, number of pixels like only. Uh, on the other hand, like if you are drawing, doing the traditional art, if you are drawing it yeah, on the paper, then when you scan it, then there is a, like also a parameter like dots per inch, like DPE, and it's recommended like to use like either 300 or 600 like dots per inch. That means like how many pixels you will get from the drawing that you have on a paper. So other way around, such a additional parameter is important. While drawing, it's so-so because still I can rescale it as long as I have like enough pixels. So I have already prepared, let's say some sketch because I didn't know like how long will it last. It's usually like a really long process. So here's like already like a, a sketch. We here have, let's say the first part, we will have like the different balls, like the seven different balls over here. Each of them will go to a different hash. Like for me, like I used like as a hash, like another emoticon or emoji or like what are they called? And some of them will repeat, which means that will be a coll like collision. And then afterwards, Here's like the process where the character like throws balls like in bins and causing, okay, here's collision, like because there will be like a different balls inside. Here will be duplicates because they are all the same. And then from here, like I will actually like just write the equation that since one is empty, like it calculates that the, that the, the number of the unique elements is 8.07 or such which is quite close to the real cardinality or real number of unique numbers, which is seven. So to do this, I actually like during the drawing, I use, I think like maximum, like four different tools. So I use like this sketching pencil, let's say to do these sketches. And afterwards I like, when I'm already satisfied with it, like since this is like a really simple drawing, I'm not, I'm not making the sketch, let's say more detailed. I can already go to inking. Let's see just, uh -huh. so that is with the tool here. And now I, I will just continue like making this drawing. This is going to be a little bit, let's say maybe boring process, like a long one, but yeah. If you have any questions, you can ask. I will be checking. Important thing, for instance, here, like in the original paper, they have actually an example where they say where they say actually like where they also use an example of like balls of different colors like being thrown like in different bins since this will be a black and white book so I, i'm actually not using like the different colors like i'm first like drawing different textures and uh, yeah and i actually even it will be like in a the color. There are some people who actually recognize like the colors a little bit more difficult. So it is 
advised to have always, let's say, some texture. Also for plots, also for graphs. So one of the important like parts where we pay attention is that yeah that the characters are smiley and like yeah on their expressions they don't that they don't look flat So I'll create another layer, like where am I going to, so now that I have to paint. So these numbers and text we will do later on. So I will hide this part. I will first do some painting. So I use these pastel colors so that when it converts to black and white, that it's still that the colors are still visible. I don't need to worry about it, like about the checking afterwards. So as they are supposed to look like sketches, like I'm not actually trying to make it perfect. Sorry, wrong layer. So, okay, I got the question, like, why am I drawing here, like the balls and squares? Okay, from the balls, like it is, it was already written like here. It is actually an example from the paper, but it's also written in our book. Just a second. It was written like in our book here, like it will be in a description, like balls and bins. The reason why I've chosen here like the smileys to look like as a hash function is because um, I wanted to have, let's say, some sort of image like something that you will recognize like like really easily, like already visually like that they are connected. There are also like other pictures that we did, just a second to see. So I'll just show you a little bit, let's say there's an example like the other images. So just a second to find them. For instance, like one of the images here, like it shows like the algorithm of how is uh, also determined like the uh, the number that is like the most like in an array and as an example like there are goats so there was like a question of like why did i use goats and it comes like more like through the conversation of me like with uh, jayla as uh, she tells me like the algorithm and she over here in this case for instance like she wanted to see somehow that these numbers that they sort of hit in each other and then like one of them falls away and we i remember like this like folk story like where i don't know like uh, the folk story where they are like like two goats that uh, like don't want to like uh, cross the bridge like none of them like wants to give up and this is why like they fight and they actually both fall down and that for instance fitted like exactly like to the algorithm 
where they are like the ones next to each other, like they both pull until there's like only one left. And that one that is left is actually the highest number. And this is why like we decided here, yeah, to use goats. We thought like it would be fun. There are also, let's say some that um, images that we actually try to make them look a little bit more interesting. But then at the end, like we changed our mind because they weren't so effective. I uh, will show now. There is like an image that shows, let's say, different levels of memory and like how fast they are with the capacity. So I've tried several of comics, like one like standing next to each other. And at the end, like we decided that maybe it's the best really like just draw the diagram and draw like a several elements, like one over another, like where they belong in the, like in the graph. So this is like literally just drawn on the graph, like several images of what do these like memory levels like look like. So I'll continue <laughs> with my painting. Let's say soon I will have like, all the elements, then I can continue talking something like more interesting. So let's say now I have the basic colors. Then I would go to the shadowing, which I usually actually do like with the purple color. And the reason why I do it because like with the purple, like bluish purple one, is because then it looks, let's say, more mystery, like more dreamlike. So in our drawing, we actually have a lot of colors, like one, like on the top of each other, and it's a actually a really colorful drawing. I'm a big fan of, let's say, coloring and adding like as many colors as possible, like until you can't stand it anymore. Which also like one of the critics came is that the colors were, let's say, too intensive. They were a little bit maybe like too hard to, to follow, like for some people, they were a little bit, let's say, too hard to look at as being like too colorful. Therefore, usually like when I finish the drawing, like when I finish my coloring, there is a possibility here, now this is like in German, to adduce the saturation. And I usually put it like much lower than as I'm drawing it. So usually, let's see, even sometimes like these would be my colors. And then like I just, after finishing, I lower the saturation, like just to keep, let's all this, so many like different tones, but that they are, let's say, easier to look at. On each of elements, I'm actually also trying to add, let's say, some sort of texture so that they look visible, like also like quite recognizable, like on the black and white version. And this is also something, yeah. Ah, oh, this one is also, I didn't see it. Now the question, like, how do I choose the colors and stuff? Actually, just randomly. <laughs> 